No! 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 Welcome back everyone. Today we'll be going over the Sony A7S Mark III and how it fares as a photography camera. We'll be going over the autofocus, file handling, banding. Yes, there is banding. The menu systems, features, and image quality. All right, let's jump right into it in the autofocus. This camera is a new generation, has real-time IAF, it has real-time tracking, so you just point on the subject. Look, I'm gonna point right to my chest, and it's on my eye. As you can see, it just follows the subject, and it'll try to find the nearest eye first, and if it can't, then it'll get the head. As you can see, it's not gonna lose you. It's phenomenal, it has IAF in video mode um, and in general the autofocus is just really phenomenal on this camera you get the top of the line type autofocus it just tracks really really good it does animal IAF and in general you can't go wrong next up let's talk about the file handling the file sizes are so small they come in at 13 megabytes. They're just really, really easy for your computer to digest. You can import a whole massive load of them and it's no problem to work on it immediately. Another thing is that um, because the file sizes are so small and you have UHS uh, two cards in here, it seems like you're never running out of buffer. You can just go on like forever. And I've been holding the shutter and you can just see that you know it's not gonna run out of buffer and if you look at the the file number i'm at 9999 and it's not even going down because the file sizes are just so small so when you're dealing with this you know i'm using continuous raw with heat files the heat file i've found that they're generally more flexible and they're 10-bit files as opposed to jpeg and one thing is that when you do screen grabs make sure you do screen grabs from video with the heat files because they are much more robust compared to the jpeg screen grabs and if you want to have like a very fast shutter speed and this thing only goes to 10 frames per second you could just put it in video mode and grab a screen grab with the heat file which gives you a lot more flexibility so if you want to grab the ultimate frame put it 60 frames per second and just start recording video and then snatch you know a frame grab from the video and that's an easy way to grab really fast action next up we're going to be talking about the elephant in the room banding and so when i got this camera i was thinking I got a mini A9 because this has a really fast readout. The sensor is really fast. But it turns out that when you're doing photography, the sensor only reads at around 155, 150, 160, around that range. It's not reading 1 over 110 or 1 over 120th of a readout speed. You're getting a slower readout speed. And it's probably because of Sony's cripple hammer. Sony's cripple hammer. That's it's hard to say it but this is I, I think it's just simply crippling done by sony and you can see here that at 1 60th of a speed you're going to get banding whenever you're using led lights but uh, what i found is that to get around this banding okay say you're shooting fast action sports you will have this banding because you're going to have to bump your shutter speed to 1 500th one one thousand maybe even one two thousandths of a shutter speed and you will get banding however you can minimize it if you're doing video one, one thousand you do video speed. and then you just do a screen grab from it it will minimize it because you're at a faster readout rate of 110 it doesn't it doesn't outrun um led lights so you're there's still a chance that you will get just a single band but it's going to be less visible because it is reading out at a much faster rate but not fast enough to totally outrun the light cycles um the a9 totally outruns light cycles so you won't get any banding with the a9 and that's one of the sad things about this camera it does not do that it's not a stack sensor it's just really sad <laughs> that it's not a stack sensor next up let's talk about this menu it's just much easier to use you can touch stuff and it will 
<laughs> you can touch stuff and you know in previous cameras you can't touch stuff and why that makes a difference is because your learning curve is going to be much better when you're using this camera i find out that even though it's completely revamped i'm just learning this thing really fast and it was a piece of cake to get over and the learning curve um, even though this camera is a video centric camera it does have a separate fn menu for stills compared to video if you can see here these are my still settings and then when i change it to video then i have like a slightly different uh, video setting it's customizable enough that you have a solid video camera and then when you want to do stills it's really solid as a stills camera the menu is much more intuitive um, combined with the real-time tracking it's it functions extremely well as a normal camera all right now we're going to talk about the extended features that this camera has the remote app okay the remote app from your camera imaging edge if you haven't noticed it's very poor the imaging edge software i'm sure you've seen this before it's it just doesn't work very well um, the problem with this software is that when you're using it you can control everything however if you're going to move the autofocus point you cannot touch the move and this is like third generation already that sony has had this problem and i believe the regular a7r mark ii way back when this wasn't it wasn't a problem you could move the af point but now with these later generation cameras you can't you have to move it on the camera body before you start taking photos and that's just a kind of a pain in the butt in terms of photography the the time lapse interval shoot funk it works does the job you'll shoot uh, a time lapse and you'll have many many photos only problem is that you can't do an in-camera combined to create a video out of it so that's a bit annoying you'll have to drag the files in and your editor will compile it and make a time lapse i just don't like having all those loose files but it's doable in the editor so i generally use snf mode but in snf mode you're just you're creating the time lapse in video but then you don't get to have the raw files that you have for photography it's not a perfect system it's kind of annoying i, I wish it did have the video output one of the greatest features of the sony system is their ecosystem and this is a one-of-a-kind bluetooth remote that i haven't seen with any other brands if you guys know any other ones let me know in the comments i just haven't seen any other brand do this and this remote is just phenomenal it's the rmt-p1bt and what it does is you don't need any line of sight to use this remote it is just so convenient so you just turn it on and um away you go and it's you can see right here it's just that simple you just switch it off switch it on it has a c1 button so you could make it do other things if you wanted to you can toggle af you can record stills or a movie you can use this plus or minus buttons for zooming in zooming out if you have like one of those electronic zoom lenses or even clear image zoom can work with this in video mode so it's just a really neat um, device to have when you're part of this for the sony ecosystem the only downside is that it can't pair with multiple bodies so if you have more than one body you just you're just stuck with one and I think that's the main drawback on this and sometimes i'm out with dual cameras or something i know that this one is only paired to one and it makes me really sad other than that uh, this remote is just so great you can do bulb shots and it has this light right here so if you have a camera like the a7 mark iii or an older camera that doesn't have a tally light and you're doing a movie recording you hit this button this thing it'll stay red so i'm gonna put the camera in movie mode turn it on it'd be working okay so there now it's recording as you can see tally light <laughs> it's really cool um but not only for tally light when you're doing bulb shots it's gonna let you know that okay your shot is still just really cool all right now let's take a look at the image quality here are some shots and prints i did all right let's take a look at these two prints it's kind of hard to tell but 
The sharpness of the pair is virtually the same as a pair here. The subject, this one's a little bit blurry. It's just motion blur. I tried to stand there for a full two solid seconds, but you can see that the pair detail is fairly similar right here and right here. I mean, it's, it's very good detail. You can see the text here. But it's it's kind of hard to see because of that little glare. As far as the little pier details, they're similar size. So it's even though they're different focal lengths, the size is not that far off. And you can see all the way down to the railing and in between the railing. Same can be said here. This one's a little bit larger, so it's more magnified. But in general, this size print is not an issue. You can see it's it's a fairly large print. Here's a, a roller. This photo right here is done with the Sony a7S III. And this photo is done with the Sony a7R Mark III. So this is 42 megapixels. And this is 12 megapixels. And upon close inspection, at this size of a print, you will have a very hard time telling any difference between them two, if you can not even spot the differences. Um, I really can't spot it at this size. I know if I was to print bigger, say 20 by 30 inch, I would definitely be able to spot it. But this size, um, it's 18 inches on the long side, around 40, 43 centimeters on the long side it's generally not a problem so if you're looking to do prints with the a7s3 this is probably going to be the limit right here 18 inches in size um, if this is good enough for you then the a7s mark III is probably good enough of a print machine for you and once again this is with the a7r mark III and this is with the a7s mark three and that's all i can say about this camera for photography it's just a phenomenal device as long as you're not printing very very big you'll be okay the photography aspect of this camera is top-notch sony they don't have a better overall package when it comes to photography yes there's more megapixels and maybe lower light i'm not really sure but it doesn't have all the intuitiveness of the menu and the whole package put together like this. It's just really enjoyable using this as a photography device. And if you guys liked it, hit the like button. What are you waiting for? Subscribe to my channel for more gear tips, tricks, and reviews. Thank you and watch the next videos. See you guys later. Bye-bye.